This video is brought to you by Dahlstrom. The most famous pastrami in the world comes out of Katz's Delicatessen right here in New York City. But believe it or not, there's a restaurant here in New York that makes pastrami that is so much better. I think it's the best pastrami in the world. That is fantastic. Wow, that's amazing. This is great. This is delicious. It's been ingrained in me since I was a little kid. If you're gonna do something, be the best. Do it right. Now, you might have seen me make pastrami a few weeks ago, and it was almost as good as Katz's, but it could be better. Now, the good news is Joe Carroll, the man behind Fetisau Barbecue here in Brooklyn, the man who makes the best pastrami in the world, has agreed to teach me and you the secret to how he makes this amazing product. I'm hoping he turns out to be our Obi-Wan Kenobi. You ready? It smells amazing in here. That's like perfume, isn't it? Chef, thank you for so much for doing this. My pleasure. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So that's ah. the pastrami and, and pork belly. And pork belly. I can't wait to taste this stuff. Let's go should for we, it. Uh, should we dig in? All right, we're in a barbecue joint. Somebody's got to have a roll of paper towels, right? There we go. There you go. All right. Now, it's Brooklyn, so you got to put forks and knives, but that's not really how we eat barbecue, right? Can we start with the pastrami? Go for it, man. The stuff I came Hell for? Yeah. All right. All right, check this, check this out, guys. Like, this is crazy. All right, you know what we do on the show. Cheers. 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 Man. So good. So good. So, you know, I took I took the crew that's filming to Katz's yesterday oh, nice. so they could have the baseline. I told them this Reference. is what everybody thinks right. is the best pastrami. Nice. Well, it's a little different. You know, they steam yeah. theirs before right. it comes out. It's a little different, but this is definitely more this of a is, hybrid. But this yeah. is... Still pastrami. This isn't Texas barbecue. No. This isn't Memphis barbecue. Right. This is Brooklyn barbecue. I think that really came from a place of feeling comfortable. I'm not from Texas. I'm not from any barbecue place, really. So it didn't feel right to me to try to copy that stuff. I wanted it to reflect New York and, and be regional in that sense. Uh, there was no history of it, of course. If I would imagine what New York barbecue would be like, what would it be? And of course, my go-to uh, for reference, was the New York Jewish delicatessen. Right. Had, had to be. Yeah. Right. So is yeah. that why the pastrami is the flagship? Or is, is the pastrami the flagship, or is it just my well, obsession I think with it, your pastrami? I mean, maybe a little bit. As far as barbecue, but I believe we were the first to do pastrami in a barbecue setting like this, and also pork belly in a barbecue setting like this. So right. to me, those are our, our most signature items as far as who we are, what we are. Now, obviously, we do very classic stuff like brisket and pork shoulder and ribs. Those are not Texas. Those are, True. like, you've yeah, developed a flavor profile right. that's a pretty signature. Yeah, I, you know, the funny thing is we, we use a dry rub that goes on almost everything we do. You know, now you've got a number of restaurants. You've got executive chefs in each of the restaurants. Sure. You've got Jeremy, who is fabulous here, and Ali working by his side. Yeah. How have those guys evolved the restaurant and the product that's here? You know, I, I think at all my places, I, what I try to do is set everyone up for success, and I play a, an integral role in setting the menu and what those original items are going to be. I, I give them the tools and the opportunity to, to then expand upon that. Jeremy and Ali are great, man. They, you know, they do a fantastic job here. They, they run a very tight ship. The creativity to kind of, you know, do some fun stuff. Hi, my name is Jeremy Garcia. I'm the head chef at Fetisau Barbecue in Brooklyn. So right here we got our pickling spice, right? Want to toast that off a little bit. Get that little stir right there, make sure it's not sticking on the bottom of the pan. Then right here, we have some onions and garlic. We just want to sweat everything down right here. We're not looking for any color. We just want to okay. activate. So all we want to do is sweat them. We yeah, just sweat it a little bit. Them. Okay. Not going to brine it or anything like that. Okay. You know? I wish you guys could smell this. It's like, it already smelled amazing in here, but now with this going on, the onions, the garlic, the coriander, and the pickling spice, the juniper berries. Yep, that's something I haven't been doing. So right there, that's like enough warming it All up right, right so here. Just a light toast. Yeah, just a light toast right there. Okay. So right now I'm gonna just add some room temperature water. So a lot of people would just throw everything in one pot. Yeah. If you people can smell the aroma right now, the water already has flavor into it right now, just because. Yeah, I definitely you know, haven't done that before. That's going to be. So new. that's that's okay. a like a certain cooking process that we make sure that you know we want to showcase every little 
part. Let that come up to a nice um, room temperature. It doesn't have to wait till it boil. So right now we're gonna add some kosher salt and the pink salt. Then we got some dark brown sugar and some white sugar. Right, the order and uh, toasting first is gonna be new to me. That's good, but you've got another container there and I think all the ingredients from the book we've already put in. Yes, we have. So this is one ingredient that is not in the book. This is one ingredient that is not in the book. That we keep away from people. <laughs> uh, just because we don't want to let out most of our secrets, but unfortunately right. we're- You guys don't, don't tell. This is a secret. Top secret. Okay. Top secret. Putting some honey into it. Special honey, hot honey? Not regular 100% pure honey. Just organic honey? honey? Yep. Okay. So right now you just want to give it a nice little whisk. Uh, make sure that the honey's not sticking towards the bottom. Now, were you gonna bring it to a boil or are you just heating enough to dissolve? Just heating it up to dissolve because okay. before pouring this over the brisket, you wanna make sure this is chilled. Right. So we'll take some ice cubes and cool it, it down. Cool it down. Right. And then pour it over the pastrami. So we got a couple of things that we've learned here that I already know are gonna up my pastrami game, right? So we got toasting the pickling spices, That's right. sweating the onions and garlic, That's right. right? We got the room temperature water, we got honey, the secret, the right? We got the honey, yep. to, right. we'll get the sweetness in there. Now we're gonna take this, we're gonna ice it to cool it off. Correct. Right, and then, uh, and then it's time to get the brisket out and uh, trim. I suck at trimming brisket, I hate trimming brisket. But, but you know what, for today, there is no trimming. No trimming? No trimming. Nothing? No trimming. That's one of the secrets about this pastrami also is like, we like to showcase the whole piece, leave all the fat, let it develop all that flavor, all that richness into it. So when I'm spending an hour and a half trimming a brisket, this should take me 15 minutes. This is not Texas, this is Brooklyn. But guys, I don't have to trim the brisket anymore. Let's pour this bad boy over. Oh. And you wanna just make sure that the liquids is submerged all over the brisket. So we got a little floater right here. And we're gonna use some parchment paper to make sure it's nice and submerged into the brine. Not plastic wrap. No, uh, plastic wrap will be right after. Okay, oh, so we'll put the plastic wrap on yeah. top so the parchment paper will help keep it down. Right, gives it a little bit of weight on top of it. And then we'll get the plastic wrap and wrap this bad boy up. Okay, so, see you in a week. See you in a week. So I fell in love with cooking since I was a child. Me and my brother used to have to feed for ourselves when my parents used to work and go to school at night. It was just something that, you know, I enjoyed doing and also seeing other people enjoy the product that I serve every day. By the way, so we know where you are now. Successful chef, restaurateur, author, great book by the way. How'd you get started with all of this? I was always very passionate about food and beverage, beer and wine and that kind of stuff. I opened up a, a beer bar. That was the first thing I did. After a few years doing that and everything was running well, I had been passionate about barbecue. I got into barbecue also kind of by accident because I grew up in the New York, New Jersey area and certainly knew nothing about barbecue at a young age. Right. Your story is similar to mine, like self-taught barbecue. Yeah. We both grew up not knowing what barbecue was. Right. I grew up in a Jewish family where brisket was made in a pot in an oven. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <of> course, yeah. <laughs> right, not right. a smoker. Right. What's up, my name's Ali. I am sous chef here at Feta Sao, and today I'm gonna to show you how we smoke our famous pastrami. You can already tell it's gonna be a good one. This is a really nice one. You can just notice how well it's cured, how evenly. I don't see any dark red spots. You can see that it's pretty uniform in the curing color. I can just tell that this baby's gonna be really, really good. First thing we do before we rub it is we have to rinse the excess brine off of it. Yeah, it smells so good. The first thing we have to do is just uh, pat it off, get the excess liquid off so that we can get that dry rub to stick to it better. Yeah, look at that color, beautiful pink inside. Exactly what we wanna see right now. This is uh, fresh coriander seed, whole black pepper, and our house rub combined. You want me to salt bay this shit? You want, me to, you want me to salt bay this shit? Ready for your turn in the smoke, you sweetheart? All right, <laughs> let's not fuck around. Come on, let's go. You, you filming? You want the New York thing? Let's do it. Come on, I gotta take a piss. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 15 hours, 205 degrees Fahrenheit. So going through the process with 
Ali and Jeremy. Right. Right. We were here last night, lit the smoker, got up in the room, but then they ran it overnight at 205 degrees. Right. Very specific. T tell me about what you know, that brings. I'll be honest with you. It, it could be 220, it could be 225, it could be 200. Right. It, it's going to obviously change the amount of time it's in the smoker. We just want it in that window. I think it's a combination of how much time where no one's here overnight, okay. what's going in, the temperature we want it at when we come in in the morning, and 205 seems to work well. menu like it's not macaroni and cheese and heavy right stuff collard greens, you know right. the, the collard greens and Corn the stuff bread, that we yeah. get in raleigh or that you get in right. texas or in memphis yeah. you've got some brighter stuff on the menu i think really great barbecue places don't do a lot of sides furthermore i really don't get eating like dense, rich, starchy, heavy things along with barbecue. So I want something that's almost the opposite of that. I want something bright and acidic and crunchy. And this broccoli salad is that. It's, it's a cold broccoli salad. It's made with olive oil and lemon juice, raw garlic. Now this is not Joe's broccoli salad. It says on the menu, Cora's broccoli right. salad, right? Cora was my grandmother. Now, is this 100% her recipe or did you Th this, is, th this is this it. is it. This is it. This is this it. Is awesome. Well, it's really delicious. I got something special planned. Can we, uh, can we head to the kitchen? Let's do it. All right. So I got one more thing that I want to talk through here. I think you guys know that this is sponsored by Dahlstrom. And uh, I actually found out yesterday, you've got some Doll Strong knives and use some Doll Strong knives, right? Absolutely, we use Doll Strong knives in this kitchen. Yeah, so that's awesome. We're gonna help you with that. On behalf of Eat More Vegans and Doll Strong, we got a couple <laughs> additions to the kitchen. This but these the are, Shogun series. You were this talking is about the Shogun yesterday. series. Oh my God. So wow. this is Japanese wow. AUS-10 wow. steel, wow. 62 Rockwell hardness. It's all Damascus steel. This is the stuff I use in my oh, kitchen. I started with the gladiators, the oh, one that you were showing me yesterday. Workhorse, workhorse. Right. Oh. So I know we don't do a lot of brisket trimming, but oh. Allie, what you've got in your hand is an eight inch Shogun boning knife. Oh man. For trimming brisket. And then Jeremy, I saw you struggling oh. with the slicer that you have. Yes, sir. I've moved to this offset slicer. Wow. And now when I slice brisket and pastrami, I don't bang my knuckles on the cutting board. <laughs> and the most impressive knife, this is the Scimitar Butcher's Breaking Knife, and I do everything with this. Like, it's maybe not onions. I, you, know, you get his chef knife for that, right? But, but I'll, I'll bone a prime rib with this. So thank you guys for doing this. Thank you. Oh, thank we you. appreciate oh, wow. it. Dahlstrong appreciates <laughs> it. And uh, guys, it's time for me to head back to Raleigh and see if I can do this. Do you guys think You've taught me everything I need to know. Can I do this? Yes. yes, yes, yes. We believe All right. in you, Al. Yes. All right. So tomorrow morning, brisket goes into the brine. I'm going to make the brine a week from then. It'll come out, and I'm going to cook it. And that video is going to be out next week. I know we're on every other week, but this one's going to be right behind it next week. So make sure you tune in next week. And we'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans.